thank you for coming. Um, very appreciative of you all being here. Very appreciative of the Portsmouth Public Library and Laura, our host here, um, and also the New Hampshire Humanities Council, both of those organizations for supporting this project. So this session about visual art was the hardest to convert to the digital format. The other ones have worked pretty well for conversion to a, a digital workshop. Um, this one really is, you know, pretty much impossible. I very much wanted you, it was a big part of my um, goal for this workshop when it was going to be live at the library. It was really important to me that you get to try hands-on um, a couple of traditional Japanese arts. And of course we can't do that now, but I've tried really hard to um, create this digital version that might inspire you to try a couple of visual arts at home. Or if not, it's a beautiful thing just to gain an appreciat appreciation for a couple of um, traditional Japanese visual arts. There are many, many of them. Today we're just gonna sample two or maybe hear about a couple more. So that was my intention and it's still my hope that you'll find this somewhat in inspiring. And we'll start in with a couple of brief videos. I'll talk in between them, um, but we'll just watch for now. I forget which one I loaded up first, Laura. Did um, I have cherry blossom painting, is that okay. right? Yes, so okay. let me say before we go to this one, this is the same. Um, artist presenting here digitally that would have been teaching you in the Levinson room happens to be my daughter, full disclaimer, a brilliant local artist um, who will be presenting to you on traditional cherry blossom painting. A very, very important part of Japanese culture, the cherry blossom is, um, shows up in art in all sorts of different ways, is very important um, to the Japanese. They have whole forests of cherry trees, kind of hard for us even to imagine what visually a pink forest would look like. Um, but they're incredibly beautiful and important. They show up in art a lot. This is watercolor painting, which is, which is one way they show up often. Okay, let's take a look. Yeah. Hi, my name is Grace Gordon. I'm gonna be doing a little demonstration on cherry blossom painting. Um, I'm mainly a self-taught artist, um, but I did graduate with a bachelor's in art history, which is why before I show my demonstration, I'm gonna show some traditional Japanese um, color wood block prints from the 18th century, 19th century, 20th century. Um, I think it's important to look at where traditions begin and we're all very used to seeing western paintings, um, especially western paintings of eastern subjects. So. I think it's important to look at these prints before we begin. So one of the main things I noticed when looking through these prints was that the artists, most of the artists, just suggested at the cherry blossoms. There's not much detail going on. Um, you know, and oftentimes they look like pink clouds. Um, and that's something that I thought was very interesting and uh, sort of gravitated towards when I was painting. Um, you know, it's really easy to get caught up in the detail. So my suggestion is to not and to just have fun with it mainly. It's really easy to get stressed out about little things and little details, so there's a lot of ways you can um, paint cherry blossoms, and, and you can go online and see all the different uh, techniques and stuff. And, um, but what I did 
um, and what I'm my demonstration is is I used watercolor um, mainly because that's my favorite medium to use but also I think it looks the most like uh, these Japanese woodblock prints um, but of course you don't have to use watercolor if you don't want to uh, you don't have any um, there's so many other mediums you can use whatever you have really I mean crayons colored pencils pens acrylic paint oil paint if you want to do that um, I mean I've even seen this being done with popcorn and a pen during the workshop um, so yeah, now I will begin the video of me actually painting. Uh, apologies in advance, some parts are out of focus, um, and it takes a little bit for the camera to refocus, but it does get there at the end. Um, and then I'll just talk through my method and what I did. So I used three brushes here. I have a half inch tapered brush and two small liner brushes um, and I'm using four different watercolors so red, white, and the brown I have was more orange than brown so I had to put some black in there but that's the only reason I had black um, but yeah so I chose a photo I, I just google searched um, cherry blossom branch because um, I decided I wanted to do um, a branch rather than the whole tree um, but of course you could do that if you wanted to do the whole tree um, but I liked the way that the branches you see more of the branch than you do the blossom actually um, when you just focus on the branch and I like the way that um, these trees have very unique growth with their with the trunk and the way the branches are. It's very distinct cherry blossom tree. There's all these juts and it juts out in its own unique way and I think that's an important characteristic when depicting this tree. But of course also the blossom is important too. Um, but yeah, so when I painted the branch, um, you can see I'm, I'm holding the edge the end of the um, the brush and I'm kind of just letting gravity do the work for me and I just spin the brush and it creates these natural uh, branch like lines that aren't perfect and, and one of the reasons I love watercolors especially when painting nature is it puddles itself and it makes these nice little natural knots, especially when you're painting a tree, a tree trunk. It, that's what tree trunks have, those little knots. So I, as I did choose a photo, I, I use it as a reference, I don't use it as a one-step guide. Yeah, I don't think I'm even looking at it anymore at this point, I'm kind of just making branches and little twigs where I want them to go, where they feel natural. So I did speed up uh, to the longer clips here because this would be a really long video if I didn't, but um, I'm starting with a lighter pink and I'm, I'm doing some full bloomed petals, flowers, blossoms, um, 
doing some tiny buds, but I start with a lighter pink um, to make it, it look like they're further away. You know, things further away are often lighter. Um, and then I go in later with a more saturated pink. So, as I said earlier, I took some inspiration from the traditional uh, Japanese cherry blossom uh, wood prints, wood ball prints, um, and I'm just suggesting the shapes. I'm not doing any detail, um, but you can easily see what, what it is, I think. So I took the darker pink and I'm doing, again, the same thing I did with the lighter pink, some full blooms, some little buds, and, and what I really focused on was just getting five petals on the full blooms. I think that's one of the other main characteristics of a cherry blossom tree, is those five petals. And not all of them are five petals, some are on the side, so you maybe only see three petals. Maybe one's covering another one. And of course you can go back to what you already started. Nothing is permanent. <laughs> So this is where the camera went out of focus for a bit, but it does come back, but all I'm doing is, is adding little dark circles to the middle to suggest that that's where the middle of the flower is. So as you can see, I've left two chunks in the corner there of, of negative space, and that's because that's where I'm going to write um, the poem. So that's something to think about when you're picking a composition.
something I always suggest is to take a step back from your work or hold it a little arms reach away from you just to see what it actually looks like and if you're happy with it. So one of the other little distinctions of a cherry blossom is they have these little stems coming out of the middle with a little dot at the end. And you see that in a lot of depictions of them. So I did that on some of them, um, but not all of them, and just let the, the darkness of the pink suggest that they're there. So this is what my finished uh, tree looks like. Uh, despite painting it horizontally, I actually decided to put it vertically. And you can see it still looks like a tree. Um, and that's kind of what I like about these depictions of cherry blossom trees. You can have them any way. You don't know if it's a branch or if that's the whole tree or if it should go horizontally or vertically. Um, and it's a lot of fun to play around with. Um, and that's, that's the most important thing, is as long as you have fun making it, it doesn't really matter what it looks like. Um, and you don't have to put a lot of detail into it to make it, make your point. Um, so yeah. Thanks for watching. Um, I hope you have fun painting, drawing, coloring, whatever, however you want to make a cherry blossom tree. So, if we were doing that um, Levinson room, this is her finished product. Um, we were going to have you write a haiku or a tanka while it was drying so that you could then put your poem on your watercolor painting. She chose a beautiful Isa haiku that I'll read to you. It says, a world of grief and pain, flowers bloom even then. So, and I love how um, 
there's this intersection always of the of the Japanese art and poetry that the art is also sparse and simpler in appearance than you know an elaborate detailed painting just like the poems that we've been talking about today so um, the next video which is quite a bit shorter is not an artist you would have had um, in the Levinson room it's a um, Japanese master of this art form which is called Yataku, um, which is one of my favorites and one I think that everybody who sh lives in a port town should know how to do anyway. So let's take a look at that video. Mm -hmm. 